welcome back. The Crusher's excited to bring Shaka Ray, leader of the Alliance, world champion team, multiple time world champion team, to you today. Shaka Ray has been a coach, a mentor, and a friend to me over the years. He introduced the Crusher to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu years ago. So I am again super excited to have this opportunity. And I can't wait for you to get to know the man just a little bit like I do. So Jacare, Alliance has consistently churned out champions over the years. Brazilian, American, men, women across all weights and ages. What factors do you think account for that level of consistent, outstanding success? Well, I believe it's because we have been one of the only teams that have participated, have been participating uh, in, in these uh, World Championships or Pan Am Championships since the inception of you know, these tournaments. Uh, all that you know, counts, plus all the work and organization that the leaders, you know, uh, myself, Jacaré, Fabio Gugel, Alexandre Paiva, and the other young, you know, I could consider young, you know, uh, generals, mm -hmm. like uh, Marcelo Garcia, mm -hmm. Cobrinha, mm -hmm. uh, and other guys that train, you know, the, the students to, to compete in, the, in, in, in this type of tournaments. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, the cast of instructors that we have mm -hmm. to help with all that is very important. We have a phenomenal guy in Sao Paulo, Casquinha, that helps Fabio a lot with the organization mm -hmm. and other guys. So Fabio will just spread his network, you know, around the country over there. Mm -hmm. I spread my network over here around the country. Mm -hmm. I have a few a place in Europe, Alexandre in Rio and in other parts, you know, of Brazil. Mm -hmm. And then we have all the other, you know, guys that start to add to the team, you know, the guys that start to open their own school, mm -hmm. the instructors. Right now I have Lucas Lepp, is a phenomenal mm -hmm. instructor over here in Atlanta, helping me before I had Cobrinha mm -hmm. for years. I have my cast of instructors over here, uh, DJ helped me a lot, Macarrão, mm -hmm. Bob V, and Trenton with the kids. Mm -hmm. And this way we try to really, like, work hard, organize the association, mm -hmm. and that's the key of the success, you know, it's a lot of hard work and dedication, mm -hmm. and, and this is very rewarding because year after year we build new champions, yep. and the, the team is solid, is strong, mm -hmm. and we have fun, that's the most important thing. Yeah, you talked about leadership earlier, but you've been practicing jiu-jitsu since the 70s been teaching in Atlanta since the 90s, but if somebody wants to find you, you're real easy to find. You're here mm -hmm. on the mat with Guy. What keeps the fire burning? How are you able to do that? Man, I, I just turned six years old, you know, last year, and mm -hmm. I always loved sports. I always loved to play sports. Mm -hmm. Since I was a little boy, I grew up, you know, in, in Rio, mm -hmm. in Copacabana, uh, I played a lot of sports on the beach, I played soccer, I played, you know, volleyball, even though I was an awful volleyball player. Mm -hmm. I never learned to <laughs> surf, you know. My brother was a good surfer, but I love to body surf, I love to swim, mm -hmm. uh, running, you know, hills. And, of course, I grew up with the Gracie's, so mm -hmm. I owe everything to, to hold Gracie. Mm -hmm. And I always saw him on the mat training. And I try always to be on the mat, you know, I have no ego, I don't care, if the kids kick my butt, you know, it's good, mm -hmm. if I kick somebody's butt, it's good. Kick my butt many times it's all, here. It's all good, you know, it's all good, you know, it's all part of the journey, you know, mm -hmm. I have fun, you know, mm -hmm. I like to challenge myself on training, mm -hmm. and I like to challenge myself uh, on uh, working out, mm -hmm. I try to give and set this example to all my guys. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have the health, you know, to compete anymore. Mm -hmm. I had some health issues a few years ago, mm -hmm. and but you know, it's no excuse, you know. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I I lost, you know, the passion, you know, to compete when I was 35. Mm -hmm. And I never came back to competition, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I love to go. I love to participate in every edition of the, you know, big tournaments. Right, right. I take big pride on my team alliance. Yep. 
I take uh, all my guys to compete. Mm -hmm. I'm there by their side, you know, yep. screaming, you know, yep. sometimes bitching at the referees, you mm -hmm. know. And man, but you know, I have you know this passion and this fire, and I think I'm gonna carry this for for the rest of my life. Yeah, it's contagious too. I remember, you know, my time here uh, mm -hmm. when I fought. I know that that was a big reason. Um, you know, that was that was a huge influence on me, and I've seen it over the years. A lot of my great friends today are guys that you helped put me together with, Paul Creighton, Chad LeBron, guys we trained here in the fire underneath you. And uh, it's one of the things we always talk about, you know, our love for you and the, the competitiveness you passed to us. But since the advent of the Worlds, you know, sport Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has evolved, you know. What do you think of the state of uh, sport Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu today, the different styles, the athletes being produced, you know, maybe some of the you know, recent rule changes? Well, everything has been changing over the years. Mm -hmm. uh, Jiu-Jitsu has evolved a lot over the years. And I have no doubt, you know, that the champions from today could easily beat the champions from yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's my humble opinion. Okay. Because I think everything evolved. Mm -hmm. Back in the days, nobody used to train three times a day. Now the athletes, the top athletes, they train three times a day. Mm -hmm. We have the evolution of the supplements, mm -hmm. supplementation, and we have the evolution of uh, how... You, you feed yourself, mm -hmm. nutrition, right. everybody's much more conscious about that. Right. We have the evolution of training methods, mm -hmm. like methodology of training. Mm -hmm. And guys, top guys in Jiu-Jitsu now, they train as much as an Olympic athlete. Right. They are the top athletes in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think the Jiu-Jitsu guys, mm -hmm. the top athletes you know, uh, in Jiu-Jitsu right now, mm -hmm. I'm talking about you know, top level guys. Right. Guys like uh, Bochecha, Rodolfo, Bernardo, Lucas yeah. Lepre, Cobrinha, Mendes, and etc. Right. They train as much as three times a day mm -hmm. with a lot of science behind. Mm -hmm. And that's the stage Jiu Jitsu is. Mm -hmm. And I just try to keep myself updated with what's going on mm -hmm. with all the you know new techniques being you know, uh, right. made it and invented and tested in competition. That's what it's all about. It's all about evolution. Mm -hmm. Do you like the rule changes? Like, for example, where do you stand on the drug testing? I've interviewed, you know, I interviewed some people and they like. I've interviewed other people and they're like, I don't like it because we're an amateur sport. You know, where do you stand? I think it's valid mm -hmm. because some athletes, they obviously take steroids. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to point my finger to anyone. Right. But you can see the performance and you can see, you know, uh, the physique of these athletes. Mm -hmm. And... I think that's not cool. I think everybody should fight clean. Mm -hmm. Just like in Olympic sports that people, they do their best, you know, to catch the guys. Right. And when they are catch, they are banned, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that what needs to be happening. Okay. I think the sport needs to be clean. Not only for the, for the sport itself, but for the safety of the fighters. Mm -hmm. Because these guys later... Look at how many football players, when right. they, they reach the age of 40 something, they have a cancer and they die. Mm -hmm. Success at any price, I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. I think you should be clean and fight clean. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is what it's all about. Fair enough, fair enough. So, alliance is the standard. I don't think anybody can argue that when you look mm -hmm. at the results, right? Um, it's a powerhouse. What teams do you see as threats or challengers? Well, challengers, not threats, but uh, I think uh, we have uh, new teams now getting organized. Mm -hmm. And with this organization, fighters from other teams, they join. Mm -hmm. And then these teams, they are stronger. Mm -hmm. Atos is a good example. Mm -hmm. And recently, you know, uh, we had guys like uh, Keenan Cornelius and right. other guys that joined JT, right. Right. and he only made his team stronger. Checkmate has a big team. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Gracie Omaita and Gracie Barra, they a little bit behind, but I, I think they will come strong mm -hmm. in a little while. And... 
I see this more like a challenge, you know, it's, it's good for us, I don't think as a negative, you know, uh, right. thing, I think as a positive, because it raises our awareness, you know, to train even harder, mm -hmm. because we can always tell our guys, oh man, look at the guys not to say training very hard, you guys should train extra harder, right, right. and then, you know, that w it's uh, what it's all about, it's all about motivating our guys, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's healthy for the sport, you know, yeah. I love the challenge, I'm not afraid of any challenge, you know. Mm -hmm. I think you can see why that man has been such an inspiration to me over the years. I hope you enjoyed part one. Part two will be on the way soon. Check out our Facebook page and stay in touch with The Crusher. I'll see you soon on Off the Mat with The Crusher.